I'm I'm hearing a recording in progress. So that means we are starting with a SEO happy hour episode. And this uh, episode will be totally different from any of these SEO happy hours that we have in this year. And that is the reason why uh, we will address the topic how to position yourself in the uh, as an SEO expert. But in terms of your sabotaging thoughts that you are having during this journey. So basically, we will have this kind of point like coaching sessions where I'm helping Pretty to actually position herself as the SEO expert that she wants. She already did that in some way, but also we will empower that like in the more direction that she, she wants. So uh, thank you so much for coming. Uh, for people who don't know me, I am Adriana Vujadin, SEO manager and coach for SEO professionals. I'm helping SEO experts to uh, position themselves and get success with fulfillment in their SEO job. And today's guest is Preeti Gupta. I hope my pronunciation of your name is uh, half and half. So <laughs> thank you so much for coming and uh, please introduce yourself. Okay. Hi. So I am Preeti and I am uh, doing SEO for like three years almost. And I currently offer like consulting and coaching as a service. And my focus with SEO is more towards the user experience side of things. So I want to ensure that the website that I'm working with has the best user experience, not in germ not in the terms of like hitting the rankings and like stuff like that, but in terms of holistically making the website a best place for users. So, yeah. Yeah. And I just love that you said that because usually SEO experts, they are, we are just saying, no, first SEO. And then if we have some space, we will do like user experience. Even we know that like it's, it's very important, but also you really want to implement everything we know about the SEO. Exactly. It's like everybody is like, we, we need to like, I think the basic idea of SEO is very weird. It's like the, most of the people that I see are like starting with like the traditional keyword research and try to find the monthly keyword volume and whatever, like keyword difficulty, and then try to make content out of that. But at some point they realize that it's the content they're making and the website is like the, the conversion goals of the website are not actually meeting. It's like their content is going in another direction, but they are doing something in another direction. So like, there is no connection between all of these things. And I'm like, bro, just, just focus on the main thing. Like, why are you, why are you going all over the place? So, yeah. Yeah. We need to bring them together. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right. So you mentioned that you are providing consulting and coaching. And in our initial call, um, it's very interesting a story around like how we came on this topic actually i invited to uh, you to be a guest speaker for us your happy hour and uh, in our initial call we were thinking about some ideas and like topics for this call and then i just realized in one moment that we are ended up like in me giving you advice how you uh, can position yourself and improve that position like as a seo expert and i said like wait like we were thinking about ideas, but actually we are talking about perfect topic because that is something that a lot of SEO professionals are trying to do and they are trying to do for a long time ago. And also they have a huge sabotaging process during this journey. So I was imag imagining like this call as uh, uh, you sharing your experience, how you start started position yourself as a SEO expert, then you are bringing some thoughts that you were having, some um, fears, some thoughts that you were struggling with. And then I'm helping you to overcome it because I was in the very similar process. I was positioning myself as a coach for SEO professionals. And then I realized that we all have very similar 
<clears throat> similar thoughts. The, 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 the biggest cha challenge is actually that we are not communicating with each other because in the end of the day, we have maybe 20, 30 sabotaging thoughts and like, that's it. But we can't move further with our, I would say like business as a positioning as you are, uh, ourselves as a SEO expert because we are, are struggling with these thoughts. So yeah, please let us know like how you started with positioning yourself and then we will go over all these thoughts that you were struggling with. Okay, so I started uh, my freelance journey as I can say like being independent journey uh, last year in, uh, in July. So after coming from a like a corporate uh, world, I guess the biggest thing for me, like in my head, I was like, yes, I can do this. You know, I can make the best offer and I can like, you know, charge the best thing and people will be like flooding over in my inbox to say like, yes, I want to work with you. But in reality, nothing happened like that. I was because we, for me personally, I always had this mindset of like, okay, we'll figure out in the end, you know. So I, I never like, like I never sit down to plan things. And when I uh, like, when I started this the journey, I was like, okay, what are you going to offer? You know, how, what is the thing that people will pay you for? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, I, I know a little bit of SEO here and there, but mm -hmm. I don't know what actually uh, I can offer that people can pay me for. So after doing a bit of research, I was like, okay, I can offer like audits and uh, like consulting and also mentorship. I don't know why I chose three different services, but yeah, the the next biggest thing was to actually determine the price. And I'm like, what about the price? How much am I going to charge? Because when I was uh, checking out other people, like just to get a sense of competition, I guess, those people were obviously in other countries and I'm from India. So like the charges here and in other countries were obviously different, but like they were also charging on their expertise because they, those people have like 10 years of experience and I just started out. I, I don't know anything, you know? So I'm like, what should I do? So it really took me a while to understand. Like, I still don't understand the pricing thing, but like for that period of time it took me a while to get okay like let's just do the hourly thing you know just just mm -hmm. to multiply the hours and just try to make something out of that but later I got to know that hourly pricing is the worst thing that you can do as a service provider so yeah it it, it was weird yeah and uh, I'm taking notes just because I don't want to interrupt you um, but if uh, here you mentioned first uh, first few sabotaging thoughts, just like in just few sentences. So uh, I want to help you and also people who are watching this. So first you mentioned offer, and then you mentioned that you started with the three different offers: doing SEO audits, doing like mentorship, doing uh, what did you mention in in the middle? Consulting consulting and mentorship so that mm -hmm. is like the first sabotaging thought like why we are doing and offering few services because our brain is thinking it's not enough that we are providing just SEO audits for example it's not enough we are providing just consulting or if we are providing just mentorship we need to do so many things because in in uh, our brain patterns is a uh, one sabotaging thought that if you are doing more if you are doing different things then you will have like more clients and then that was in the past a long time ago maybe when uh, for example these agencies have been uh, can be like full service agencies providing everything but in today's world when everything is so saturated the only thing that is really appreciated is very niche as your expert Mm -hmm. So, for example, just SEO experts for SEO audits and even SEO audits for specific niches, for specific size of the website. Because, uh, you know, uh, 
business owners um, and all these uh, all of these people who were looking for your services they they will have a thoughts i really want um, i'm special my case is special my company is special my my website is special i really need to get someone who really understands me Mm -hmm. And when they are looking for like these things and like to tickle their pain points, they will find as a person who is very specific, like niche expert, for, for example, for small websites, for big websites, for migration websites, for something like that. Uh, they will think that you understand them more than just when you are doing just regular SEO audits, you are providing mentorship, you are providing consulting. And that's the, 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 I would say like the first sabotaging thoughts about the offers. So what I'm seeing that is better performing when you have like very specific offer, very specific niche. And uh, because in that way, you are able to increase your expertise. And I think mm -hmm. the the biggest example and the most contradictive example is when I started to uh, doing uh, coaching for SEO professionals, mm -hmm. I did see a lot of coaches uh, in the SEO industry. I did see a lot of SEO managers, but the one thing that I didn't see is actually being SEO manager and coach for SEO professionals. So that's the thing that I didn't see at all. Maybe they have like in the, in the world, but uh, that is a perfect example that if you are so niche, that doesn't mean that you are not right. That, that means that you find a very good niche. And when you are finding like this good niche, then it's very easier easier to, to put yourself as an expert, uh, uh, ex expert in that file. Because I think for me, it would be definitely more harder to position myself as a SEO manager and SEO expert in some of the technical things like content management things, even I know them, because there are a lot of great SEO experts in this area. So don't be afraid to go very niche because that that is actually helping you to easier easier uh, position yourself as an SEO expert. For example, if you are positioning yourself as a SEO expert for SEO audits or like being a mentor consultant, doesn't matter. Then you can do that for a while, get some clients, get that like visibility. And then on top of that, you can put like more services because you will be appreciated like in that small community. And then you can put in like more services like as your services. Firstly, you will be attracted to your like small community first, and then you will get like even more visibility. So just like starting small and expanding your SEO services because otherwise it's it's not working like the marketing is so saturated all around the world like but still just be aware of these sabotaging thoughts that if we are if we are uh, uh, making like different SEO services then we are hoping that we will get more clients but in the reality it's not how how what do you think about that? And like, can you can you tell me like your thoughts during my uh, telling? Like, do you have any like question or concerns so we can address that? Oh, like I I have heard a lot about like niching down and like try to uh, cater to a specific market, and that will make you an expert in that market. But like sometimes I'm like if I niche too down, like I like make my offering so specific, how would people even know about, you know, like if I exist or not, you know? So this is, this is what I think. And also like in terms of pricing, obviously like it, nobody knows how much to price, like at least in the starting phases of their journey. Like as they get more experience, they obviously know their worth and they uh, they can charge by the value and things like that. But like, if I niche down, should I like 
keep my what, how what kind of prices should i keep you know mm-hmm. should i keep uh, less prices should i keep more pricing and because uh, there is also one thing like when like i have personally talked with a bunch of people they were like bro you don't even have like a 10 years of experience how are you charging like thousands of dollars for this you don't mm-hmm. even have the required experience and you don't know how to do things how to you know uh, communicate or talk to people so how can you actually uh, go out and like charge this much for like a single service you know yeah okay so first thing yeah that, that's perfect example because uh, when we are saying uh, niche down then oh I'm so afraid that nobody will see me and uh, here and I love your uh, coffee mug uh, thank you here when you're ni- uh, niching down you put some some numbers how for example if you are doing mentorship program or let's go with a mentorship program if you are doing uh, mentorship programs for for specific target audience firstly how many of mentees you can really handle in one day on on a, uh, on weekly basis or monthly basis because that will actually if you don't do anything else if you of course, if you do something else, then that means that you will have less time for doing mentorship. So yeah, uh, that means that there is a specific number of people that you can help. Because what if I can give you like 100 uh, mentees today? Can you handle it? Yeah, of course not. (laughs) That's the thing. And definitely when you're starting your mentorship, there is some kind of like number, especially like in the first things, because like all these uh, mentorship programs are also getting, uh, uh, taking your energy. So basically you can handle even like 10 clients per, per day because you will just like be in the burnout in few weeks and like we didn't uh, have any success with that. So firstly, like be kind of like real with you. Okay, how many people in this month I can help? For example, that is like 10 10 people for for January or something like that. And then uh, start with with pricing. And pricing will definitely uh, depend on two things. Firstly, how how much money you need for a month to survive. The second thing, if you are already working part-time, full-time, then definitely you have some amount of um, money that you are getting. And then third thing, even I I, I said like that it will depend on two things. It will depend on the third things. Third thing is actually, okay, with what kind of people I really want to work with and um, which people like I can really help with because that will depend on your experience and then it will depend on your uh, expertise for the future, the value that you are providing uh, to people and all these things. So for example, my approach is actually get some uh, luck, kind of like luxury coaching because I don't have time to, to work with the 100 people with the, uh, in, on a monthly basis. I have like full-time SEO manager job. And then I really uh, can't work with so, so many people because like I will be so exhausted like in the, in the day. So having like all these things, you are putting some kind of numbers. So I will not tell you like, should you go with the cheap options, with the most expensive options? Like you will see, you will feel it in, in, in your body. And definitely like when you are providing so so many, so much value on the LinkedIn, on YouTube, wherever you are providing your value, you will see like your free value that you are providing to people need to be more expensive than what they are getting. Because I know, and like that is, that is so that is so simple. Because I know my coaching program is two thousand for four months, and I mm-hmm. know the value that I'm providing is like more than five k. So it's so easy for me to kind of like sell it to position because I know the value what they are getting. Mm-hmm. 
and the the the, the same thing you you are doing for your your for your like target audience mentees like whoever I, you want even the SEO clients SEO service you know the value that you are providing because if your client is getting some money from the SEO service then you can put some numbers on on, on yourself and in the end the price is not important just like put that price and move forward because when you are getting like 10 clients for for example the most cheaper offers that you you can get after a few months you will realize that like that that something that you are doing it's more valuable and you you need to charge more and then just like change the price um, after a few months but don't allow to not being specific about price, to not knowing how to price yourself, stop you in doing like what you need. Mm -hmm. So just like have all these things put on the paper, how many things, what are the people who that you would like to work with and then put the number and move forward. Work for a few months with these clients and then realize, okay, do I'm overcharging, do I'm undercharging? Because in the most of the, 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 the very common sabotaging thoughts, here, is act, uh, here are actually that we are underestimating all our knowledge, all our expertise, all the things that we know. But when we are having clients, when we are getting good feedback, then we realize, oh, definitely I underestimate. Let's put some... Uh, uh, um, bigger prices or um or on the service or of the mentorship mm -hmm. i think uh i think even with pricing it's like you can start by like like you know uh when you start to provide service and you like okay i will provide seo audit or something but when you talk with other people in the same industry it's like if i'm providing seo audit so if i go to other people and i'm like bro they have a lot of knowledge you know i don't know anything i i'm like i'm i'm the worst seo ever like why would people even pay me because i don't know things you know how uh, how some people are very efficient with uh, some tools they know how to use things better and uh, they can they can be more efficient in their process but it's not like i am not efficient it's more like i uh, i don't have that kind of knowledge because obviously they have like 10 years of experience i don't i have like 3 years of experience and it's like why you know why even i am comparing myself to them but sometimes it's like how would people even pay me because i don't i i don't know the most efficient way to do seo you know mm -hmm. so i i guess this is another sabotaging thought yeah let's let's address them so first thing you mentioned when you are talking with other people um th that's the thing you only need to get feedback from your target audience from your ideal customer profile because these people that you are talking with, they are not your target audience. They will not pay you. And then mm -hmm. people, because they want to uh, uh, kind of like help you, they are telling you like, oh, don't overcharge, don't put that price, don't do that. Like, because they, they want the best for you. But honestly, if you are SEO consultant, freelancer, if you are doing SEO, you are the only person who needs to put the price because like you are doing it and then definitely not talking about pricing with your friends with your families especially because they don't understand they don't understand and like they are not guilty because they they, they really want to save us from the some disappointments or something like that but the only people who who we should talking about the, the pricing are actually putting the offer and then talking with our target audience. The only people who really want to pay us. Everything else, they want to save us. And it's the same when parent, parent wants the best for the kid, but like they are just like, they want to like do all these things instead of kid, but like in the end, kid is not independent and all these things. So please, if you are providing SEO services, you if you are SEO consultant, don't 
talk about pricing with your friends, families, supposes, husbands, because they are not in the industry. The only way, if you are having the team, for example, two consultants are going together uh, and they will work together, then like these two people are putting the, the price on their SEO service. Everyone else just like talk about some other things, but not about the pricing. Mm -hmm. The second thing that you mentioned is actually comparing yourself to the others. And, and that's great that you already recognize that is sabotaging thought. And at the, in the first glance, just like uh, uh, um, be aware that is sabotaging thought because that thought and that brain pattern is coming from our early childhood when our parents were comparing us to our siblings, to brothers, to sisters. Then we enter the schools and then we were comparing with other kids. We were getting grades. So grades are great for destroying us, our confidence because uh, someone is telling me that I'm not good enough if I got a specific grade. Totally like nonsense, but like, let's move forward. <laughs> then we were grading our colleges, like what are the better colleges. Then we were coming like to... We were coming to a company where we uh, have been great, like which level, then all these things about promotion. So everything else around us is comparing something us to others. Then uh, fabulous LinkedIn came. Our imposter syndrome was on top because now we have a perfect platform where we are comparing ourselves to the people who we over. We don't know at all. We don't know how much they know, how much they don't know, how much they are working, how much they not working, and all the external factors. And then we are sabotaging ourselves to do some actions on daily basis about our offer, about providing value to our future clients, to helping the current clients, because we are just thinking and comparing ourselves to the others. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing with LinkedIn, as you mentioned, is that these people really put out the best version of their life on, on LinkedIn, you know, maybe on Instagram, but on LinkedIn, okay. They're like, I made, I don't know, like 30,000 a month or something. And uh, like, I am going on vacations, I'm going on beach or something. And I'm like, I'm watching a movie with my girlfriend or something. And I'm like, it's it's okay, bro. It's It's LinkedIn you know it's okay but like all of these things even though i don't want to compare myself to anybody bro i'm i'm falling behind you know i you know my life is going away i can't do anything you know i uh, i haven't done anything or i haven't made enough money to you know travel the world or anything so these this is such a weird thing that people only put out the their perfect kind of versions mm -hmm. on LinkedIn, even though they are crying in the corner, bro. It's like so, so yeah. such a weird thing. And and that things uh, that things is actually uh, across all social media. It was Facebook in the first place, then Instagram, then, then like TikTok for a younger generation. Like for us, professionals are more LinkedIn. And we are definitely experiencing like uh, all these imposter syndrome thoughts because, uh, for example, if you if you see like these people on Instagram that wouldn't uh, be so triggering for you than when you are seeing like these uh, LinkedIn people because we want to be that SEO expert who has the money, who has position, who has visibility, who has like everything. And then we are triggered even more because we want to be there. But just mm -hmm. like, again, be aware, like social media is doing that, but also um, being focused on, on the positive things on the LinkedIn, when we are be able to be in touch with some real SEO experts, ask them in commenting, like seeing some insights, good results. So always moving and risk shifting that mindset from seeing all these kind of like negative things, sabotaging thoughts to actually like, hey, how I can benefit because like that expert that you're seeing that they are uh, having all these like travelings, that can be inspiration for us. So for example, next year we are doing the same. So um, don't use them 
to actually harm you, use them as inspiration that you want to go there. You want to, uh, uh, you are going towards that goal um, to achieve that. So next year you can be the same. Mm -hmm. Another thing is like, uh, I've seen a lot of people like personally I've talked with them and they, I always tell them that they should be creating content on like LinkedIn or wherever just to like, get in front of more people and get more visibility and actually to uh, so showcase yourself as the authority person so that they will buy from you, you know. Most of the times they were like, I am putting in the effort. I'm trying to make the best content. It has happened with me too. Like from uh, last few weeks, I'm not putting out any content. It's because of like my mental health is not the best these days. But like with other people, it's more like, I am try I'm trying my best like I'm I'm doing everything but my content is not getting uh, the engagement or the traction that I want it to get you know so maybe uh, they have put all their effort in in this LinkedIn carousel and uh, at the end they were like bro I only got like 10 likes you know I I was expecting a lot more I was expecting a lot more impressions or engagement but uh, I didn't got as much uh, engagement so suddenly they don't want to create content anymore because the it's the existing content is not hitting their uh, goals you know so mm -hmm. yeah it's another weird thing yeah and um that is something that when I'm uh, um, talking with the people who are getting a lot of clients, even from LinkedIn, even from other social medias, the one thing that is like the most common thing. And um, last week I was talking with Olga Zar in at her like podcast, and like the weirdest thing uh, is actually our clients who are our clients. They are not liking our posts. They are not commenting our posts. I don't see them at all. And I just get DM on my LinkedIn. I just get, uh, got them email. They are uh, looking for coaching. So uh, the likes, engagement, like any uh, of these things are actually not real KPIs for your leads, for your real target audience. And definitely, maybe even like you have noticed with yourself, when you are reading something on the LinkedIn, you like it. You you like as a like in the in the mental thing, like you you're really in love with this content, but you're not putting that like for any specific reasons. And definitely, like there are different thoughts around that. But let's focus. So even you don't see any like comments and uh, anything. It's, it's not a, a, the direct correlation with you and not getting the con, uh, not getting clients because I I'm assure you uh, all these people who are kind of like um, as your consultant independent they are not getting uh, clients likes engagement nothing because these people are professionals they are watching you. They are analyzing you. They are checking if you really understand them. Because if you if they feel that you really understand them, if you're providing that constant value, that you have that constant things, like doesn't matter, like you don't need to pass like every day, but at least like twice per week. But they know that on Monday or on Wednesday, they are getting some valuable content, something that they can learn or if you are providing as your service, then your clients, because definitely your target audience for mentorship and for SEO audit is totally different. So for mentorship is definitely SEO professionals, young SEO professionals. And then for SEO audits, they are not uh, SEO professionals for SEO audits, that is your target audience. Here you have uh, need some business owners and then not just get, um, not just like general business owners, your specific niche business owners. And then that, that is the thing, because if you have few offers and you are providing on Monday, you are teaching as your professionals how to uh, do the, their SEO audit, but on Wednesday, you are providing SEO audit for your clients. So target audience will be confused. Like, uh, are you teaching them? 
to do SEO audits because like if you're teaching a business owner to SEO audit, like, yeah, they will not uh, <laughs> pay you definitely. Or you're, uh, or you're doing mentorship for this. And um, that that is a crucial thing because, uh, you know, every day we have just like few seconds to catch like what people are, are um, doing. And if you don't put uh, that very straightforward offer, hey guys, I really do like this, just like mentorship programs. If you are SEO professionals from one to two years experience and you want to learn how to do SEO audits, mm -hmm. then your offer is clear and you are constantly providing some bites of the content that people, SEO professionals can learn about doing SEO audits. Then they will know like, hey, I really want to uh, upgrade my knowledge how to do the SEO audit. Let's let's uh, contact Prita about uh, Pretty, sorry, uh, about the the SEO audit. And th that is the thing. So if you are thinking how to combine your niche offers, maybe this is a also a good way because this is very uh, uh, specific. It's niche and it's clear. Like you are teaching people as your professionals about doing as your audit and mm -hmm. then providing constant con content don't don't go and check about the likes even we all do that but likes views on the uh, on the linkedin uh, or youtube are not the 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 real representation like about our clients because for example, if we are seeing just like 30 views on uh, on YouTube and I have just like small, small number of views on my YouTube. But for example, la last, uh, uh, I don't know, for example, one video uh, hit 50 views and I'm seeing, yeah, this is so small because I'm all, I'm watching all these videos with a 1 million views. But can you imagine that all these 50 people who watched my videos are paying my um, SEO coaching sessions. I, I, I don't need more. I don't need more uh, people and I can't handle more people. So even uh, you, are, you are seeing 10 likes, 10 uh, something. Can you imagine getting like 10, 10 clients that you are teaching? Or even one mm -hmm. or two. And always put in mind, you don't know what is happening in the background. But these people thinking about you, maybe it's not good timing for them. Maybe they have their own struggles. Maybe they have own problems in the life. So just leave them alone. You do your things because mm -hmm. you're not doing this for money. We all do this because like we are so passionate about SEO, about helping. So even just like, okay, I will do this for a certain period of time, but every action that you are doing will actually bring you uh, closer to your final destination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's so true. I think it's uh, it's more like when, when we finally uh, try to feel good about our services or our offering and if I feel confident in myself, then I think it will be... Uh, like you know, as we talked about, like radiating energy sort of thing. Like if I if I don't if I radiate the negative energy, and if I if I don't even feel confident in myself, how can I make sure that the the client or the target audience is like you know confident in myself for buying the services or something? Mm -hmm. So yeah, and that is very connected with these LinkedIn likes because we, for example, we were putting some content out on, on the LinkedIn post. And then we are thinking, and we have these thoughts that something is not good enough. We didn't put that post, for example, as a person who would do that, like with 10 years of experience. We are putting that post. We know that it's not perfect. And then we are expecting others to like, to confirm that I'm good enough. <laughs> That's so true. So in the first place, what is sabotaging thought here is actually we are expecting others to like us, to be confident, to have that confidence in us. 
and the same and the same time we don't have confidence in ourselves mm -hmm. so when these being good enough thoughts confidence thoughts are coming firstly from us then i don't i don't care like what other people are saying if they are not liking the most important thing that i know for that linkedin post i write that i share all the knowledge that i know today and i'm very proud of myself because putting that post was very vulnerable i know that some someone can uh, say hey this is not true this is not uh, valuable or something like that so firstly i'm proud of myself that i am being here constantly that i am trying to teach other people that i'm trying to put a good content and i'm still learning because i'm still learning even recording the videos um and even recording these kinds of sessions but i'm mm -hmm. here i'm open for um people like commenting like hey this is not true but I don't care because the most important thing for this session is actually me to help you how you put all these uh, things around the offers around the price about all your kind of small business things and then go to to LinkedIn and try to find your next clients mm -hmm. everything else they, they they can say whatever they want they can say whatever they want about my look, about my uh, video quality, about my English, about my coaching sessions, but I don't care because for me, the most important thing that I like this way, I know that I will be better in uh, next year with all these recording sessions, my English, my content, but I'm able to, to leave that in the future and let's do some actions today what will bring mm -hmm. them what will bring me in the future to be to be that like perfect version if perfect version exists i don't like everybody tries to be perfect but i don't think there is anything called perfect you know and and also like as we talk about english english is really the weird thing <laughs> like for real <laughs> I've, I've heard this countless times. It's like if you don't know uh, like how to communicate with people, you don't know the, the better English, I guess, then you can't have clients because I am I'm obviously not from a native country. I, I don't know how to speak English. And they also don't know how to speak Hindi. So like, yeah, yeah so like it's kind of in between. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that is just another sabotaging thought. I had that. I had that because I was learning my English for like 15 years. I was trying, I was enrolling different courses and all my friends and families, like they have a joke, joke around me. Like uh, uh, I'm trying to translate that in English. Like uh, who is working what? Adriana is learning English. So that's like uh, the first thought for the last 15 years uh, about me. And um, that was very hard for me just like to uh, to go in the online world when I know that all my friends, families, uh, SEO people will be actually able to listen to me. And I know that uh, my English skills are not on the way and like level that I really want. But uh, honestly, the, the weirdest thing that happened when I when I started to record all these videos, that is the the, the year that I have improved my English this in significant way. Because just imagining every week you are recording a new video and you are just like talking, talking, talking and just comparing myself to the last year and this year, my English is better than like 90%. Because now I'm talking uh, in, in different way. I was practicing because if I'm not recording these videos, I will not practice like these kinds of things. I will just like be doing some SEO audits, SEO strategies, and I would communicate with the clients. So I know it's kind of like cliche when you are hearing like practice make it perfect, but also you can't uh, you you can't uh, hit that final destination without traveling. And we, mm. we all want to travel, for example, to Dubai or something like that. But we can't just like, okay, today I'm here. In next five minutes, I want to be there. 
and we are enjoying this traveling because we know <laughs> that we are going to that destination. But when it comes to positioning yourself as a SEO expert, uh, being promoted in your job or something like that, then we are not enjoying the journey. And that's the thing. That's the thing that if you're not you're not enjoying your every day, every small piece of work that you put on the LinkedIn that you did for a client, then you can't uh, 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 go to the next level, because on the next level it's just like more challenges, more responsibility, more all these things. So mm -hmm. once you overcome these small things, then you are ready for the next level. Mm -hmm. It's it's. I think it's uh, the the enjoying the journey and practicing more is uh, true for almost everything, including SEO. Obviously, like if somebody wants to be a better SEO, then they they have to practice. You know, it's not like I can just think in my head, okay, I will become SEO expert one day. Okay, I will, and I'm not doing anything to to reach that place. So, like, I guess we just all have to do things. Sometimes it's just like we become lazy and like we don't want to do the thing, but I want the like the final thing, you know, but yeah. I don't want to do the work. So, yeah. yeah. And, the, and the very interesting thing is actually that you mentioned like being lazy on like not doing the action because all these sabotaging thoughts or procrastination is something that putting us kind of like in the safe place. Because cause definitely being lazy is much more safer than just putting a LinkedIn post out there. Exactly. But the, 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 in the end, why we are not doing these actions? Because of these sabotaging thoughts. Because we really enjoying in the SEO. We really want to help others. But these sabotaging thoughts are blocking us. So we are not doing any action. Mm -hmm. So it, just like... It, mm -hmm. Oh, no, I was just like, it's it's funny because I, like, even, even today I feel very, uh, like, not the best and not very confident about the things that I do. But it's like, slowly and steadily I'm, I'm learning things, you know, and, and try to be more confident in myself and my offerings. I, I'm still on the, like, very much the way of re redefining my services. And I'm like, I only want to focus on one thing. I, I will not try to be the generalist. I, I want to be the specialist in only one thing. And yeah, that's on. And I'm just, it's it's weird also because uh, even if uh, I know that maybe, okay, I want to do SEO audit for like a certain type of websites. It's, it's weird because I, without getting any clients, I won't know if I am, like I am meant to do this service or not you know mm -hmm. like I, I I haven't even got any clients and I'm thinking to myself Preeti you're not getting clients because your offer is shit your pricing is shit and your website is bad you know the web your, your design of your website look at your website your website is the most trash website on the planet you know nobody will look at your website and your you're charging too much and uh, you are not putting good good posts enough and that's why people are not coming to you. See, that's why people are not coming. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. I constantly have these thoughts in my head. Yeah, because you are just thinking how your website is shit, like how you don't know how to do something. So let's focus what you know to do. And just mm -hmm. like sm small steps. Okay, today I want to learn this. I will learn this. I will share on my LinkedIn. All the insights that I have learning from this. Okay. Let's move further. Of course, if you are doing uh, all these sharing uh, uh, thoughts, will actually be aligned with your target audience. So mm -hmm. you are learning, you are sharing your insights. Other people can learn from it. Mm -hmm. And then you just like continue to do small actions. I see. Okay, interesting. It's like, yeah. People also talk about building in public. It's like, as you said, like you learn things and you share things with people so that they actually, uh, they are on the same boat, I guess, as you and they they will understand, okay, what you are doing. And uh, 
I also think that I we we should also share things that are not very shiny. You know, you can you can like I can share things that like I am feeling bad or maybe I'm not like uh, a few weeks ago I uh, shared a post that okay my mental health is not doing the best these days. You know, so it's not like I should only share the the picture perfect things or like the shiniest things ever we can also share like the other things you know the other part of the story yeah people will more appreciate you if you are sharing these kinds of vulnerabilities and they will connect with you with these with things with because like we all know that like social media is just like fake world but if you go there and say like hey even this is like fake world and everybody's saying about this i will share my thoughts like about positioning myself about just writing the LinkedIn post about uh, uh, being lazy, how to procrastinate uh, things. And then like my journey, what I was learning during this way, because definitely that post will more connect with other people. And then just like, yeah, this is the perfect world. Like, let's, uh, let's see how I'm great. Exactly. Wow. This is, I think this is very, very insightful like not just for me but like for everybody who will watch this because I think every everyone has some sort of sabotaging thought but they don't share it because they feel like the people will judge them you know Mm -hmm. yeah that's why they don't share the same even like I had a similar sabotaging thoughts I have now some uh, thoughts that I'm working on so I can reach the next level or other SEO professionals. Like doesn't matter if you are, if they are full-time. Um, a lot of full-time SEO experts are trying to position themselves uh, as the expert like as well. It's not just about independent consultant freelancers. Like for all people who would like to position themselves in the SEO world somehow so um, that is the reason why uh, I decided to go with this kind of uh, uh, session if it's like it's first time uh, usually I don't do that because uh, uh, with my clients I'm working on side and I'm not putting that on the internet but like this is something that is very valuable for all people who are working on themselves and position themselves as SEO experts so Thank you so much for for this call. Uh, I just see how much the value we are providing. I hope it will help you as well. So let's see in 2024 what kind of struggles you have during that journey and how we can upgrade that uh, position to the next level. Sounds great. All right. Thank you so much. And just a disclaimer, we didn't record this in the regular SEO happy hour uh, Tuesday session because of the time difference. So I didn't want to miss uh, Pretty to have uh, this SEO happy hour opportunity to talk and speak, but we we found uh, a new way. So you will be able uh, for all to watch the recording on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much and um, happy holidays. Thank you so much for having me. It was such a great like insight. Like I really learned a lot of things today, like for real. <laughs> nice. Thank you so much. And uh, this is not end of our conversation. We will have it next year again. If you want. <laughs> I'm, I'm not <laughs> yes. answering. <laughs> no, sure, sure. <laughs> I would love to have the conversation again. Nice. All right. Thank you so much. And um, see you in the next year. This is the last SEO Happy Hour episode in this year. <laughs>